overall, we're gonna do a five minute video, a deeper dive. So I just had a consultation and I'm helping this company out. And here's the scenario. I'm talking to the kids. So, and, and by the way, I say kids, they're adults. They're probably in their fifties, maybe closer to 60, but they're the running the day to day of a successful family business. Uh, it's a closely held corporation. And what that means is it's a corporation as opposed to an LLC and closely held just means that it's not publicly traded. It's not out there for anybody to invest in. And in this scenario, there's only two owners. It's mom and dad's best friend. It's an interesting dynamic, but they own the company on paper 50-50. But the day-to-day -day and everything running the company is being done by the kids. Now, the kids own 0%. The kids are not owners of the company. They are not filing corporate tax returns. They are just employees. Now, they control the day-to-day. -day. They can choose whatever salary they want to give themselves. And without them, the company wouldn't run. And there's no real argument about that. The, the older generation, let's call it that, understands that the company's running for the grace uh, of these people working uh, every day in the day-to-day, -day, the kids. And so I'm doing the consultation with the kids. Now, the really interesting thing is all of my questions about the corporate governance and the corporate structure, they didn't really know the answer. And let me add a couple layers of com uh, complexity. So mom has died. And so mom's 50% is supposed to go directly to dad. Now I start asking questions. I'm like, okay, is that in her will? Well, I don't know. Well, is that in the shareholders agreement? Well, I don't know. And by the way, those are the two ways it could happen. So either she could say in her will, I give my interest in the company to my husband. And if my husband's no longer available to my children, right? It could say that in the will. The problem there is that, the, that, that we might have to probate that will meaning we're gonna have to go down to the courthouse and actually file a, the will and the petition and everything you have to do for a probate. And in estate planning, one of our biggest goals is avoiding probate. One of the biggest goals is not having to go to court, not having to hire a lawyer, not having to spend sometimes up to 18 or 24 months. And that's if there's no problems, right? Because part of the, the probate process is putting the world on notice. You have to file a notice in the newspaper and creditors then have what's called a creditor period where first of all, you have to notify all known creditors, hey, known creditor, this person just died, or the unknown creditors have what's called a creditor period. And so then we can have disputes about whether or not we actually think that they owe the money to the creditors, whatever. And then that's also, what if there's a family member that doesn't agree? What if there's a, another sibling that feels like they got left out and they accuse the other siblings of some sort of fraud or undue influence on mom or dad? So anyways, you can see how it can get really complicated really fast. The other way to handle succession in a company is to have it in the shareholder agreements. So the shareholder agreement signed by the two owners could say if either one of them passes, their interest will transfer automatically to their spouse or whatever the instructions are. Now that happens by operation of law, meaning we don't have to go to court. We don't need to do it through the probate. We don't need to hire a lawyer. We, it, it, it's supposed to happen automatically. So that is, in my opinion, the preferred way for a business owner. Now it gets even better. They lost the corporate book. They don't know who the corporate lawyers are. And they did it so long ago, those corporate lawyers, we don't even know if they're still in business or if they're still alive. So the corporate book, we don't know. It was in mom's possession. We can't find it in her work office. We can't find it in her home office. And so what, again, when I'm asking the question, how did the interest transfer to dad? They kind of were like, ah, I don't know. Now, a lot of times in, inside of families, and especially if the, the other owner really is a best friend, we're not gonna have much friction. Everyone's gonna get along. So now the scenario is at least they think that dad owns 50%, dad's best friend owns the other 50%, and again, the kids are, are, are running the everyday day-to-day. -day. And they've heard a rumor that dad's best friend wants to sell. So then the question is, okay, do they wanna try to buy it? Or is that even in their best interest? And, and where, where are they gonna find the money? Or are they gonna do seller financing? So there's a lot of different things to unravel. And the crazy thing is, I was talking to the wrong people. So what I said to them is, I was like, listen, they asked me, what would you do? And I said, if it was me, the first thing I would do is sit down with dad, right? Just dad and have a real conversation with dad. Dad, what do you want? How do you want to handle this? What are your goals? What, are, what is your vision? And, and let's see if we can align it. And hopefully dad and dad's best friend continue to live a long and happy life and the business stays in business. But there's a lot of questions and a lot of question marks. So if you guys have any questions for me or if you know anyone in a similar situation, please just reach out or leave a comment and I will reach out to you.